across the fence. Have you ever wondered what it takes to grow one of those giant pumpkins that you see at the fair? We have an expert who has the answers. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. My guest today is one of the state's giant pumpkin growers. It's a pleasure to welcome Steve Miner from South Hero, who grew that 650 pound pumpkin that you just saw in the picture. Welcome, Steve. Very impressive. Well, thank you for welcoming me, Judy. Yeah. Well, you're a member of the Vermont Giant Pumpkin Growers Association. Tell us a little bit about that group. Uh, the Vermont Giant Pumpkin Growers Association is, of course, for people who like to grow giant pumpkins. We don't grow just giant pumpkins. Um, anything that we can grow giant is uh, something we will try to do. I've been a member for about uh, eight years now, mm -hmm. and um, anyone can join the club. And for a $20 fee, what you get is uh, a large packet of seeds, mm -hmm. and you get uh, a newsletter a how to grow seminar, a pumpkin patch tour and barbecue, and you get to enter your giant pumpkin or however big it is into the state way off at St. Mazda's every year in September. Now you brought along some pictures that you want to show us. It's quite a collection. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at those. What are we seeing here? All right, what you're seeing there is uh, some of the crew in the Giant Pumpkin Growers Club. Uh, you can see there the largest pumpkin last year weighed 1,649 pounds. Wow. And the smallest pumpkin was uh, 197 pounds and everybody got prize money. <laughs> nice. What else have we got? Uh, here we have the state record for largest squash grown by Dan and Holly Boyce, 913 pounds. Wow. And um, that record still stands, I think it's five years later. Wow. Okay, we've got another picture to see. Yeah. All right, that's the uh, largest watermelon growing in the state, 127 pounds, by John and Carrie Young from Jericho, Vermont. Nice. And what's the next picture we have? The next picture shows Holly Boyce with her husband Dan's state record <laughs> tomato, 4.81 pounds. I have to laugh at that picture. <laughs> the tomato is so huge. I know. That's <laughs> incredible. Well, it looks and sounds like a lot of fun. And I know at the end of the program, we're going to have your email address for folks if they want to email you and, and get more information. Right. But right now, we are going to get Steve's expert advice on how to grow a giant pumpkin, thanks to contributing editor Lynn Jarvis, who's been a regular visitor to Steve's garden. Lynn? <laughs> Thank you, Judy. In this small garden just off Route 2 here in Grand Isle County, we're going to observe a miracle with a little help from Mother Nature and the horticultural skills of Steve Miner. It's good to see you, Steve. You're welcome, man. Steve, for many years, has been growing giant pumpkins that you might have seen at the fair in Essex Junction. If things go as planned, this small seed will produce a pumpkin that can weigh as much as 2,000 pounds. Well, then, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get the Champlain Valley Fair about how to grow a giant pumpkin is what to do with the seeds to make sure that they're going to germinate. And here we have a seed from one of my giant pumpkins that I displayed at the fair a few years ago. And it hasn't been filed yet. And the reason for the filing is so that the water can get into the seed and be absorbed more readily so that the seed coat will split and the pumpkin can actually grow faster. So after filing a seed like this down, it's put into a plastic bag inside of a damp paper towel, mm -hmm. and it's kept on top of a heating mat that's attached to a thermostat so that the temperature remains constant. After a few days, you'll be able to see these seeds have actually germinated. This, this one germinated about uh, three days ago, and this one germinated just a couple of days ago. So I'm just going to take these four inch pots, fill them with potting soil, and then I'm going to be putting one of these sprouted pumpkin seeds in here. And I make sure that the potting soil is damp, but not wet enough so that I can squeeze it and get any moisture out of it. Let me get my tongue depressor so that I can make a little slot in the soil. We're going to take this one and very gently Put it in here so that the root goes down about three inches and cover up the seed with just a few inches of soil. And then this is going to be taken inside and put on a heating mat until it pops out like these two. About how long? This is going to take three or four days, Lynn, and hopefully these will look as good as those that are just starting to break out of the soil. 
It's another beautiful day in South Hero and all four of my seeds are doing well. I know you're probably all waiting for me to tell the secrets of growing giant pumpkins and I just happen to have two of the secrets right here. One of the secrets is this beneficial fungus called mycorrhiza. It's a beneficial fungus which attaches itself to the roots of plants and enables the plants to take up more nutrients and water. The second very important secret is kelp meal. Kelp meal is a veritable soup of nutrients, enzymes, and amino acids. And without these two, giant pumpkin growers couldn't grow the 2,000 pound pumpkins that they are now able to. Well, Steve, this is an exciting day for me because we're actually going to plant the pumpkins and I have one that's going to be the prize winner, I know. I certainly hope so, Lynn. <laughs> So I'll take care of your prize winner until the next time. Steve, it's been about three weeks since we've been here and this plant has really taken off and it does rain here in South Carolina. It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about what's happened here. Okay, um, basically nothing happened for about two weeks and then last week the plant started growing and sprouting leaves and uh, it laid down and now it's growing at a rate of about six inches a day. It's been about a week since we last visited these pumpkins and I've been kept really busy burying the vines and adding fertilizer. They're growing about a foot a day and the, one of the reasons for burying the vines is to help increase root growth by adding the fertilizer underneath each leaf node. And the other thing is we get some really strong winds out here in South Hero and these vines are really fragile and if I don't do that they might twist right off the main vine here. Unfortunately, we have to pinch off all the baby pumpkins on the side vines. That's so all the energy will go into making a big pumpkin on the main vine, and that'll be happening in probably about a week or so. Hard to believe, but the fair is about 40 days away. <laughs> I don't see many pumpkins yet, but, but what's going to happen today? This female flower just opened up this morning, Lynn, and I'm going to be using a male flower to pollinate it. First of all, I have to strip the petals off so that I can get easy access to the male part of the flower. Okay. And then I'm going to be rubbing the pollen all around the interior of the female flower. And in three to five days, Lynn, this pollinated pumpkin is going to look like this pumpkin. Wow! I keep this fabric on it to prevent the skin from getting hard because it's going to grow so fast that the skin will actually split if the sunlight hits it too much. It's July 19th. It's been about a week since we've been in the pumpkin patch and the pumpkins and the plants have grown tremendously since then. The plants have used up just about all of their space and here's the pumpkin that we pollinated last week. It's now eight days old and here's something to show how large it is something to give you an idea in comparison. Steve, I'm amazed at how much this has grown since we were here last time. Now, how do you account for this? Well, then I had a soil test on this spring and all I did was to add what the soil test recommended in terms of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, magnesium, and some others. Steve, since you were last year, this pumpkin, I would say, has more than doubled in size. It's a beautiful orange color coming along, and we don't have to get down on our knees to look at it anymore. Now, how much would you estimate this might weigh? Well, Ed, giant pumpkin growers have devised a system whereby we take measurements to determine the approximate weight of the pumpkin. Let me show you. We take the circumference around the pumpkin, and we do an end-to-end -end measurement, and we do a side-to-side -side measurement, and that gives us the approximate weight when we add them all up. And 
According to this, we've got uh, 173 pounds. 173, yay! It's August 21st and time for the pumpkin to go to the fair. Steve has hired Ron Bushway of Grand Isle to help him load the precious cargo. One false move can mean disaster. Mission accomplished. We're just outside Expo North and the pumpkins are about to be weighed. I understand there are six or seven entries and it looks like Steve has a lot of competition. Let's see what happens. With the judging completed, Steve's pumpkin came in fifth at almost 400 pounds. Good job, Steve. And now back to you, Judy, in the studio. Well, thank you, Lynn. Steve, that was definitely a lot of work. <laughs> it is. Now, I know you can't give away all your secrets, but what about if someone just wants to grow a big pumping, pumpkin, but not necessarily a giant pumpkin? If you want to grow just a big pumpkin that's going to weigh anywhere from about 50 to 100 pounds, you can do that. I um, brought some seeds sure. here uh, to show you the uh, Big Max, Big Moon, mm -hmm. um, first prize or prize winner, and uh, why it's wonder. And all these pumpkins will definitely give you uh, a pumpkin, as I just said, 50 to 100 pounds, and you don't have to do all the work that you do for the <laughs> Giant, giant pumpkins. pumpkins that I grow. Now I understand that the seeds from the prize winning giant pumpkins are just about like precious as gold. What variety of seeds can you recommend? Um, I would recommend that you get Atlantic giant pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. uh, from growers uh, such as myself. Uh, and uh, in terms of seeds being as precious as gold, um, online auctions sell seeds sometimes for as much as $400 a piece. Wow. Now you live in South Hero, which is home to Island Arts, and that's an organization that provides creative arts scholarships to young people in areas like music and dance, and you've come up with a unique way to help support the Island Arts Scholarship. Tell us about that. Yes, I'm going to be selling seeds at Hackett's Orchard and the Green Frog. Um, five for five dollars for my prize winning pumpkin that you just saw there with growing instructions and um, you can get in touch with me via my email address uh, and I will be more than glad to help uh, the buyers of these seeds grow their seeds into giant pumpkins. That's very generous of you. Well, I, I try to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, um, you can get prize-winning seeds at two locations in South Hero. They're available at Hackett's Orchard on South Street and also the Green Frog, as mentioned, on Ferry Road. And at the bottom there is Steve's email address. He'll be happy to hear from you with questions and comments relating to purchasing the seeds and growing giant pumpkins. And Steve, of course, will also be at the Champlain Valley Fair this week, so you should stop by and say hello. Um, that's one of the things that you like a lot is to talk to folks about your pumpkins. Oh, I just love to talk to people about pumpkins and hear uh, what their concerns are about uh, what it takes to grow giant pumpkins. And also, I get a lot of other questions, some of which I can't answer, of course, because they're talking about things like their uh, roses or stuff mm -hmm. like this. Right. So what's, what, what's the most common question you get asked? Um, one of them, of course, is, do you use milk? Uh, milk? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so and people have it in their heads that you have to use milk to grow giant pumpkins. Another question that I get is, do you use some sort of steroids? <laughs> and of course, that's not true. It's all about, though, good health for your soil. Oh, definitely. The soil comes first. You really have to take care of all the microorganisms of the soil so that uh, they can make the nutrients available to the giant pumpkins. Well, Steve, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and talking about your pumpkins, and I look forward to seeing you at the fair. Well, thank you. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.